Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we are gonna be doing a ton of preservation. I've got counters and tables filled with produce. This is a entire wheelbarrow filled with Asian pears. We're gonna turn into sauce today. I have an entire box of onions. These are cool. These are onions that I grew from Dollar Tree seeds. They were supposed to be green onions, but a bunch of them actually bulled up in size. So we're gonna preserve these. We are gonna process some plums. I've got my two roaster pans out. We're gonna be doing our sauce in those. If you've never made any sort of like applesauce or pear sauce or tomato sauce, get yourself a roaster. Way, way, way easier. What else do we have? Oh, in here, we have a huge entire thing of peppers we have to process. We've got kale we need to wash. We've got eggs and an entire table over here. Uh, we have zucchinis. Probably won't do anything with the tomatoes. We'll just see what we get to. We've got pears. These actually need to ripen, so we might not get to those today. I have herbs that I need to take care of. Those are some dried rosemary. And then I have two empty food dehydrators that do not need to be empty right now. They need to be having things in them and processing. So what we're gonna do first, I'm really excited. I had a little bit of coffee today with caffeine in it. And I went to the gym this morning, which I haven't done in a long time, so I'm feeling really good about myself. And so I'm excited to get this done. I've got the energy I need. I've got comfy clothes on, I have some leggings, I have my slippers on, I've got an apron, and we're just gonna get to work. You guys already say I talk fast, and I might be talking a little faster today. So I'm glad you guys are in my kitchen and we're gonna get this done. I actually have a birthday dinner to go to tonight at 5.30, so I need to be done at around four o'clock so I can shower and get ready and do all the things. And it is 10.30 right now. Oh, I also have I also have two bushels of peaches here and then I have probably 40 pounds of carrots. So I'm not exactly sure all the things we're gonna get to today. But we'll just work together and get as much done as possible. I do wanna get these done because some of these Asian pears have um, little bug holes in them, which means we need to take care of these as soon as possible. Let me show you what I have going on here. I have I have one of these core slicers and peelers, and I'm gonna try to use this on the Asian pears. I'm not sure how well it's gonna work, but I have this. I'm gonna link this along with all the equipment that I use today down in the description box if you're interested in checking anything out. Let's just get started. I also was listening to like late 2000 hits, which is like brings me back to my high school era, and I'm pretty pumped about today. So this is gonna be fun. So I just put on an Asian pear here. And let me show you how this thing works. Oh, we wanna engage. Let's see. Remember how to eat, there we go. All right, so I just put the Asian pear on here and all you do is do this. Just like that, we've got our Asian pears. I'm not gonna worry about this little bit of peel here. Maybe I will take it off. And I'm just gonna cut this and throw this into our roaster pan. I did put a little bit of water in the bottom of this so that it wouldn't scorch while it heats up and starts to cook down. I'm gonna set this on 300 to start and we're just gonna keep going and going. I put my peels on here. I'm actually just gonna throw that in there. That there, and let's just keep going. I do have a knife and cutting board because I'm sure there's, you know, bits that are gonna have to be cut off because of bug damage or just damage in general. By doing this, by slicing them, it creates, it makes it so that they cook down a lot faster. And I'm gonna try to get this canned up today if I have time. So hang out with me while we get this going. I wanna get the pears going first so that I can, while they're cooking down, I can be doing other things like processing the kale and the onions and plums. This is gonna become really sticky. I can already see how much juice is coming out of here. There's some seeds, so we're gonna take the seeds out. And I'm also gonna put a towel down here so that the juices that fall on the floor won't make quite as much of a mess. See, this one has a little bit of bug damage. All we're gonna do is cut that off. The way I 
I like to use this is I use it kind of as a sweetener when I make baked goods or we'll just eat it as sauce. I put it in quick breads, I put it in baked oatmeal. Some people leave the peels and cores in while they make their sauce and then they run it through a food mill. I've done that before, but it changes the texture and I don't like the texture like that. So I have just found my personal preference and you can do whatever you prefer is to take the peels and the pits off. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I actually put a bowl on the floor here because this is so juicy and it's just dripping so much. And I did put the towel there, but the towel was getting soppy and I probably have a half a cup of juice actually on the floor in a big bowl. And what I made me think is I just bought a steam juicer and I think I'm gonna take these peels and pits and I'm gonna try to juice them and can the juice. So I'm pretty excited about that idea. I just got my brand new juicer out and I'm gonna attempt to juice these peels because they're so juicy. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. So this is not, a, this part is not a tutorial. This is just me trying something new. So I'm gonna fill this part of the juicer completely full. I put some water on to boil the bottom part of this. Let me show you how much juice is on the bottom here. This is how much juice is just dripping down from the counter. I'm gonna taste it. Oh my gosh, that is good. So if this tastes anything like this, we're gonna be golden. When I figure this juicer out, I will definitely give you a tutorial on this, but for now, we're just gonna do an experiment. I got one roaster completely full and I went ahead and switched it. And now I've got this roaster out and we're gonna fill this one next. So I'm gonna put the lid on here and I'm gonna stir that occasionally and we're gonna work on filling this one. This is taking a little bit longer than expected. It is now 1240 and we have two full quarts of pear juice and one that's half full. This is working. I'm super thrilled with it. I just had to add some more water to the bottom. So I'm excited to do a tutorial on that for you guys. But what I'm doing now with the pears that are starting to cook down is do you see all this juice that's in here? This is basically all Asian pear juice in here. I mean, I put probably like three cups of water when I started this, but these pears were completely full. So I am just taking a measuring cup and I'm taking the juice out here. I can do it. I get my... So instead of having all this liquid have to evaporate, I am going to just have two products. I'm gonna have juice and then applesauce, or pear sauce, excuse me. I don't wanna take all the liquid because I want some of it in here so that you know we do have like a nice sauce. If that little bit of pear gets in here, I'm not worried about that. But you can see how beautifully this is cooking down. I'm almost done, I probably, let me show you. So I have this many pairs to go through. This will probably take me another 25 minutes or so to get through, so let's just keep going. We are officially done with the Asian pears. This is all the kind of buggy stuff that I'm just gonna feed right to the chickens. I'm gonna try to clean my mess up just a little bit. This is the second round. This is gonna go into the second round of the juicer. And I'm gonna clean my mess up because it is a sticky mess around here. Let's untake this off. So this just screws onto the edge of the counter. And I'm gonna get this in the sink rinsed off. And now I wanna do something that's not gonna take very long because I feel like I spent two hours doing this and I wanna feel like I'm accomplishing some more stuff. So right after this, we're gonna to move to the kale. So I have all my kale in here and there were some aphids on it. And so, oops, darn it. 
I want to make sure I get all the aphids off, so I'm just going to go through and wash every leaf. I'm going to freeze this kale, I think. I really like to have frozen and dehydrated kale because the frozen stuff, it kind of holds its texture really well. So I'm going to make a pasta, like an Italian sausage kale pasta. I like to have it from the freezer so it holds its texture versus I like to dehydrate stuff when I hide it in things like pasta sauces and things. And I already have quite a bit of dehydrated kale right now, so I need to get this to the freezer. I have all different types of kale in here. I have red Russian, blue curl. This is walking stick kale, but that kale didn't get very big this year. It's the first time I've grown it, but apparently it's supposed to get like 10 feet tall. Ones that have kind of a thicker stem, I'm gonna go ahead and de-stem them as well. my washed kale here and I just have a food saver. This is a quart size food saver I think. Bag? Yeah. One quart bag and all I do is I stuff it as full as I can because kale cooks down a lot so I really 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 like to make sure it is stuffed full. So I think I'm probably going to get two. Well, let me just divide it by two because I think this would be a good amount for two meals. I don't cut it or chop it or anything before I put it in the freezer bag because when the kale freezes, the ice crystals kind of break apart the cellular, the cell structure. And so they crumble up really, really nicely when you go to cook it. So no need to chop or anything at this point. Perfect amount for two. When you're using Food Saver, you wanna push it down because you wanna give yourself a few inches at the top. So easy to do. I love watching this thing. And we're going to hit vacuum and seal. And there we have it, kale for one meal. And we're going to do that again. So let's fill another one of these. We're, this will be our fourth full one. So I think I have enough in here to fill a full one. And then I have a half of one. You want to be really careful with this. I have splashed myself a few times and it is obviously boiling. But I'm loving this thing. I can't believe I'm getting this much juice just from the peels and cores. I would have just thrown this away and given it to the chickens or made vinegar out of it, but I can't go through this much vinegar. Next up, let's deal with these peppers because it felt good to get something done. I got those two bags of kale done and I wanna get these peppers in the freezer. So my husband for my birthday just got my knife sharpened and so I'm pretty excited to use them. I haven't used them since he got them sharpened for me. His business is pretty awesome. I'm going to set this down so I don't <laughs> cut my face. So he's got lockers on his front porch. You put your knives in there and you take the key and then he sharpens them in about 24 hours and then you just take the key when it works for you and you go pick your knives up. So while I was in Montana, my husband for my birthday got these sharpened. So if you're in the greater Metro Portland area, I will leave the link to his business down in the description box below. He didn't ask me to do this or anything like that. He doesn't know I exist, but I just think it's super cool. And I honestly think these knives are gonna be super sharp because all over the paperwork, it said, be careful not to cut yourself so your knives are sharp. Probably said it 10 different places. So let's give it a try. Butter, butter, oh, oh my goodness, you guys. These are really nice knives, actually. I got these as a wedding gift. They are, I can't even pronounce it. They are the J.A. Henkels. They're a German knife, and these are like the real deal. Well, they're not the off-brand, and I just haven't sharpened them in seven years, so they were super dull. Even you guys mentioned that you could tell that my knives needed sharpening and I barely have to just, I mean, I'm putting no pressure. They are just cutting this pepper. I mean, my knives were at the point where I had to take it and go like this to get it to start cutting. That's how dull they were. And these are back to like brand new, beautiful knives. 
So what I'm gonna do with all these peppers, except for the hot peppers, because the hot peppers are gonna be made into sauce, I am gonna chop them into dices. When I freeze peppers, I don't do anything special with them. I just chop them and throw them in a food saver bag. Normally I usually use a freezer Ziploc bag, but I'm using food saver this year to try to keep things a little fresher and we'll move on from there. Oh my gosh, you guys, these are so beautiful. I need to pay attention to what I'm doing because I don't want to cut myself. I can't believe I have a whole box of pepper, a whole bowl of peppers here that I grew. If you want to watch the whole harvest of all the stuff that I harvested that I'm preserving today, the video will be up here and down in the description box. And I need to stop wheeling and dealing this knife. I need to be paying attention to what I'm doing. So let's keep chopping. So one thing when you're kind of preserving food is it can feel kind of overwhelming and exhausting in the moment because this is a lot of work and I'm probably spending most of my entire day doing this. But one awesome thing about it is when it comes to winter time, my life is gonna be so much easier because I'm gonna already have these peppers chopped. I'm gonna try to get to my onions today where I'm gonna chop them and preserve them as well. And so when I go to cook recipes come this winter and fall, I will be saving myself multiple steps of having to chop the vegetables. And when you're cooking food, a lot of times the chopping and prepping is what takes the most amount of time. And so by doing this, I'm just saving myself time in the future. I'm definitely not saving myself time right now, but future self is gonna be super happy that I did this. And the cool thing is I grew this. I knew exactly what went into it. These are 100% organic peppers and peppers are one of the dirty dozen. There is a list of produce that is on the dirty dozen and the clean dozen. So if you can't afford to buy everything organic, which I certainly can't afford to buy everything organic, it gives you a list of the things that if you have to pick and choose what things to buy organic and what things to buy conventional, you can make a better decision because different produce holds on to a different amount of pesticides and peppers are one of the dirty dozen. And so if you are gonna buy peppers, it is really important if you can afford it to try to buy organic. And I did not grow, I maybe grew like five peppers last year in the same amount of space as I did this year and I've already quadrupled that. And so I'm just super thrilled that this is all stuff that I grew, but I'm also excited to have some prepped ingredients in the freezer ready for me. Peppers are a really cool vegetable to freeze because you don't have to blanch them. I've never blanched them and they turn out just fine. Now obviously if you thaw them you're not going to want to eat them like you would a raw pepper because they do get soft but when you cook them in things you wouldn't even know that they had been frozen. I cook them in fajitas, I cook them in chilies and soups and whatever you'd put a pepper in and you can't tell that they are frozen or were frozen. And I'm excited to do it in the um, food saver because I usually just use a freezer bag and they sometimes, you know, they do build a little bit of ice crystals on them and I don't think they're going to when they are in the food saver. I'm taking a break from the peppers to check on the juice that we have going on around here. Oh, there we go. I'm taking out some of this pear juice out of here. This one, I haven't taken any juice out yet. I'm probably gonna do just one quart per roaster pan. Every once in a while, I'm giving each one of these roaster pans a good stir. I'm gonna switch out this fruit mash here. I think this is cooked down enough. This will become chicken food. You can see how much that's cooked down. I'm gonna put it in here. That smells really good. I'm gonna get this reloaded.
So I have all this. I have all the sweet peppers chopped up now. What I have here are my poblanos that are kind of like medium. They're, I mean, they're not hot, but I want to slice these instead of dice them. And I'm gonna slice these and use those in fajitas in this coming year. And then in here I have my hot peppers and I'm gonna be doing some hot sauces with those. So I'm not gonna chop those up today. So I have two, four, six. This is my seventh bag, I guess I forgot this piece, of sweet pepper, which I cannot believe I, and there's still a lot more out there. I cannot believe that I've grown this many sweet peppers. I just spilled an entire uh, one of these on the floor because it was hot and so I am going to be using a pot holder from now on when I'm holding my jar because it's hot and I didn't get that on film I thought I was recording but I didn't now I have about five towels on my floor and that is going to be a really sticky annoying mess to have to clean up so if you use this thing I'm having way too much fun with it but respect it because it's hot very very hot and I'm bummed I lost one but I didn't hurt myself so that's okay. This is where you have to be careful. Then I'm gonna use another pot holder to grab the top, transfer it over here. So now I have a good system, two pot holders to do this. We got three bags of the poblano slices for fajitas and seven bags of the sweet bell peppers. I'm now gonna get these just prepped and ready to go into the canner. I have seven and that's how many fit in my canner. So I'm just wiping the rims. I'm gonna put a lid on, put a ring on. I've got my canner filling up with water. I did decide to go ahead and add a tablespoon of lemon juice to each one of these just to be safe. I want it to be safe. And I actually can fit two, four, six, seven, eight in here. So I gotta get one more filled up. Oh no, I can't. Just kidding. So for where I live, this needs to water bath can for 20 minutes. Now it is time to get these onions chopped. I'm freezing these onions because I don't think they're going to have any sort of shelf life. I'm just going to cut the ends off and then I'm going to give them a good wash because these are not storage onions. These were green onions that I just happened to get to bulb up. So I'm just putting them in whole, some of these little ones, and I'm doing this for stews. I thought this would be good. One less thing to chop too. And they're perfect size for that. We got two of the whole onions packaged up, and I got five of these chopped onions packaged up. We're still waiting for the pear juice to come to a boil in the canner. But I think that this pears have cooked down enough that we can actually blend them into sauce. This is an immersion blender. Love this thing. If you don't have one, trust me, it'll save you a ton of time. I'll link this one down in the description box. One of my favorite kitchen tools.
So it's four o'clock, which means I need to go get ready for this dinner party that I'm, or dinner that I'm going to. I got all of this stuff packaged up, ready to go. What I have in here is right before I leave, I will take the juice out of the canner. It will be in there for the 20 minutes it needs to be in there for. This probably has two more quarts of juice. I just turned it off. I don't want to deal with it. I made another mess. I, I'm going to figure out a better solution for this thing because while I was blending up the peaches to make the sauce, this fell on the floor and was dripping all over the floor while I was doing that. So it made another mess. So future, I'm going to figure out a better solution for that just so that that doesn't happen again. And lastly, what I have here is I just put these on keep warm. So they'll keep warm for us until I need to come back. And tonight I'm actually going to can these, but I'm not going to worry about it now. I kind of did a quick clean on the kitchen. I did a quick sweep on the floor. I turned the dishwasher on. I put any dishes that were in the sink or around in the dishwasher, got that going. If it's done when my husband gets home, I'm gonna ask him to unload it. And I did turn on a load of towels because with how much I spilled on my floor today, I went through like six beach towels, which this is not, <laughs> you're gonna get real life here. So let me just put these last towels in the washing machine and I'll see you back after I have dinner. Good morning, friends. It is the next day. Needless to say, I did not come home last night and after my friend's dinner and decide to can a bunch of things because I just didn't. And so it is 7.30 this morning and we are gonna go ahead and get this pear sauce canned up. I kept my roaster pans on low all night just to keep it kind of warm. And then on the stove, I did put my pressure canner on there and we're gonna water bath in my pressure canner. While I'm at it and have the kitchen dirty, I'm gonna make my husband a baked oatmeal. He is golfing right now. I just put some oats in here, some cinnamon, some salt. I'm gonna put some of the sauce. If you want the full recipe, I'll leave the link down in the description box. I figured instead of canning this and using it later, let's just use this sauce in this oatmeal. These are fresh eggs from my chickens. I think this egg is a double yoker. Look how big this egg is. Let's see. Yep, see that? While I'm waiting for the canner to can, I'm gonna slice some of these peaches. I was thinking about canning them, but I've already canned some. So I think I'm just gonna get them dehydrated.
we did it. <laughs> I have one single jar in the canner right now and it's gonna be done in two minutes, but basically we're done. And I got the kitchen clean. I had to mop these floors three times because they were, as my husband put it when he texted me when I was at dinner, hilariously, hilariously sticky. Uh, when you spill twice a whole container of juice on the floor, it makes a massive mess. But I am excited to have that juicer because we got 10 quarts of juice out of scraps that I would have just composted or gave to the chickens. And I still get to give the scraps, the fibery part, to the chickens. So it's pretty incredible that we got 10 quarts of pear juice. I am thinking, oh, it's hot. I can't touch it. I am thinking all sorts of cocktails. I'm thinking ciders, because I'm gonna do the same thing with my apple trees. We got 18 quarts of pear sauce, and like I use that mostly in baked goods and things like that. Pear sauce is not my favorite thing just to eat. Like I love just eating applesauce, but pear sauce, I'll probably cook it in quick breads and things like that. And a lot of baked oatmeal. We got two packages of the full onions. We got five packages of the onions that are chopped. We got two kales. We got three of the poblanos that I sliced for fajitas and we got seven of the bell peppers chopped up. This all came from my garden and I am blown away. I also did fill up the dehydrator with some cherry tomatoes and then we got a baked oatmeal with pears and eggs from the garden which I'm happy to have this so my husband can eat this when he gets home from golfing and he can eat it all week for work. So like I said, if you want the recipe for that, it's on scratchpantry.com and I'll leave the link in the description box below. Oh, and now we need to turn this off because that one is done. And we now technically are officially done. I did put my roasters in my pantry, my walk-in pantry, because normally I store all that stuff in the garage, but because I still have three apple trees that need to be harvested, and I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these types of projects, I am not gonna put it in the garage because I'm just gonna pull it out probably in the next three or four days. What I'm gonna do now is head out. We just got the last two loads of lumber, not lumber, firewood. What I'm gonna do now is I am going to stack the last bit of firewood we need for the year. While I was in there working, the guy who delivers our firewood dropped it off. And I think we're gonna have enough firewood to last us for this winter, hopefully. I have firewood not just here, but I also have it in our shop and in our garage. And we will be heating our house almost solely with firewood this coming year. And I'm gonna be showing you a lot of recipes cooking on this wood stove, which is pretty exciting. It's a beautiful day. It's supposed to get to 86, but it kind of is crispy. It's crispy but it's kind of got that fall crisp like scent and feel in the air, which I'm pretty excited about. I cannot wait for fall. I know that I'm still in the midst of harvest season, so I can't get quite that excited for it, but I am honestly ready because that means it's gonna be a quieter time, but I've got so many things to deal with before we get to that point. So when we get there, I'll just be that much more happy that it's here. Once I take care of the firewood, then I am gonna go ahead and shower. I'm gonna sit down and edit the freezer cooking video for you guys. And I just wanna say a huge thank you for being willing to hang out with my kitchen when I haven't showered, when I'm kind of a mess, because if you're just willing to hang out with me as I am, because you, this is when I'm doing it. And so just thank you for being gracious and willing to hang out with me as I am. So. I just wanna say a huge thank you once again. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more like this, consider subscribing if you're new, and there will be videos that will pop up here that you can go watch if you'd like to go watch those. I hope you guys are having a great day. I hope your gardens are abundant, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye, guys.